What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of On The House Podcast. I don't know if this is episode 7, 17, 24, because if you follow any of my stuff, you know, I'm all over the place and I really don't have a, a set schedule. Maybe I got to get a little bit better at that. At that. And uh, in my quest to get better at video, better at YouTube, uh, better with podcasting, uh, I came across my guest today, Nick Pelosi down in the South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Grand Strand area. Uh, really stumbled across him just by Google searching uh, realtors in the area and came across his YouTube channel. And uh, honestly, I was just drawn right to it, doing all the right things. I said, I got to connect with this guy. So, uh, Nick, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, how was the weather down there in uh, Grand Strand, Myrtle Beach? <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, it's it's pretty awesome. It's like 70 degrees today, you know, first week of March. We've had a bunch of days in the 70s already this year, so not too much to complain about. Yeah, I was I was just down there uh, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago and right. it was 76 degrees walking the beach in mid-February. Uh, I wish I could just be down there full time, but you know, <laughs> I, I got to stick it out in New York for a little while longer. Uh, now, yeah. you're originally from New York, right? I am. Yep. I'm from the Poughkeepsie area. So born and raised there, moved down here to Myrtle Beach. Uh, actually, January was seven years ago. And you got a little bit of the Southern twang going on, but the more I talk to a Southerner, the more I sound like I'm from the South too. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's what everybody from up there tells me is that I talk a little bit slower now and, and drag out my words a little bit. Hey, nothing wrong with slowing things down a little bit. You know, I'm here on Long Island where uh, you know we're close to the city and it's it's go, 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 you know, hustle and grind all the time. And when I get down there, you know, I use uh, Kenny Chesney's phrase all the time. When I've had it up to here, I go down there and <laughs> you know, to slow things down. I got you. Uh, yeah. So like I was saying, I, I stumbled across your uh, your YouTube channel and mm -hmm. loved it. I mean, I've been doing a lot of research, a lot of digging on just the right ways to do your YouTube channel. And I've been changing mine up. And it seemed like you were just, you were checking all the boxes, right? Like with your thumbnails, your videos, the topics, the style, uh, you were checking all those boxes. So I think the, one of the first things I asked you was, who are you following, right? Are, are you getting coached on this? Uh, who's teaching you how to use YouTube? So I think that's uh, the first question I got for you is, how did you get the idea to do your channel the right way? Yeah, so I don't have any like formal coaching, never signed up for like any programs or went through any programs or anything like that. Pretty much everything that I learned, I learned for free on YouTube. Um, so kind of this the same thing I'm doing for my clients, just throwing the free content out there is is kind of what I did for myself. Um, and I actually first stumbled across a page on Facebook called YouTube for Agents. Uh, I don't even know if it exists anymore on Facebook, but it was by Karen Carr. Carr yeah. And um, she, she had a program. Yeah, she's awesome. And um, she had a program that she was doing. Um, and it, she did like a five day free webinar and her pitch at the end was selling her course where it was like a where everything was kind of done for you. Um, but basically in that five day course, she kind of the free version, she taught you everything that you needed to know to get started on YouTube. And I just hit the ground running after that, just learned about searching keywords, learned about doing the thumbnails, learned about how to structure the videos and um, and just went from there. Then along the way, I came across some other people like Levi Lassick down in Dallas and kind of just refined what I've been doing. And it's still a work in progress, but it, it's going pretty well so far. It's it constantly learning, right? Constantly growing. And, and the algorithm is constantly changing too, right? So we got to kind of stay up to date. Once uh, I, I started doing, you know, the generic thumbnails that everything looks the same when that was the way to go, make it look <laughs> like a television show, right? And now it's make sure your thumbnails don't look the same at all. You know? So things are constantly right. changing with it. Uh, I love that you mentioned Karen Carr. I had read her book as well. And uh, it's funny, you know, I, I, I'm a big Gary V follower. Uh, you know, a lot of these content strategists out there will say, give away all your secrets, right? And that's what she did. Right. She said, I don't care. I'm going to give you give away all my secrets because 99% of people aren't going to execute. Well, you're one of the ones that actually executed. So she lost that sale, but she probably got uh, quite a few others where she just did it for right. them, right? Right, um, exactly. That's, yeah, that's what I love. I love about following her and the other content creators out there. I've been uh, following a lot of like uh, Dan Parker. I don't know if you know Dan out in San Diego. No, I don't. Yeah. He's uh, actually been doing some uh, YouTube page audits, and I jumped okay. on with him the other day and told me, do this, do that, change this, change that. You know, and, uh, It's starting to pick up a little bit. I haven't had as much time as I want to edit the pages. Right. Uh, you know, speaking of time, how much time are you spending making YouTube videos? 
Um, the, the amount of time has kind of shrunk down a little bit since I started, obviously, as I've gotten a little bit more proficient at making the videos and editing and all that, because I am still editing and writing all my descriptions on my own right now. So no um, that's kind of been handling it for you. Just, it's all you. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, that's kind of something I'm exploring. I'm looking for somebody who can edit my videos right now. Cause that takes up the most amount of time. Um, so to film a quick 10 to 15 minute video, it typically takes me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on the type of day it is. You know, if I'm really on it and I'm going through my script and I'm kind of checking them all off in one take, then it's, it's pretty quick. Um, sometimes I'm stumbling over my words a little bit more and I have to do things over and over. Um, also it kind of depends if I'm going to go out and film something out in public, do I need to do a property tour? Do I need to do a community tour? Things like that. Obviously that's going to take some extra time to film versus just sitting down at the desk and doing the talking heads. Um, but I'd say anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half. If I have to go out somewhere and film something else. Um, and then editing the videos that takes some time. Um, it used to take me like four or five hours. Now I'm a little bit quicker at it, but I am adding in some extra edits to help keep people's it's attention. A more refined, but you're getting better at it. So it's speedy. right. So exactly. Like, like professional editors out there, they say, uh, for every hour of film is two hours of editing usually. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what I was going to say. It typically takes about two hours to edit a video. And when you're saying, you know, going out in public versus the behind the desk talking head, um, obviously with your setup now, uh, that behind the desk type stuff that you just, you got a camera set up there, you got your phone set up there or, or how you set there. Yeah. So it's pretty much what you're seeing right now. You know, I'm in my office at home and I got my camera set up right here above my computer. Um, I have a little microphone right up here, right off the screen and a little light. And then you can see I got some practical lights behind me. Um, and yeah, I'll pretty much just sit here and I'll talk about a topic, you know, five best things about Myrtle Beach, five worst things about Myrtle Beach. I'll give tips about different price points, different areas. I can do map tours. Um, so just kind of pulling up Google Maps and doing tours. And pretty much every video has something like this in it. Um, you know, if it's, it might just be the intro and the outro. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'll go out and we'll actually film homes or film communities or different areas around. But 90% of the time, I'm just sitting right here talking to the camera like this. If you if you are out in public, you're doing something out on the street, do you have a videographer following you around or how are you doing that? No, so um, I'm, I'm just filming it all myself. And again, 90% of the time it is on my cell phone. You're doing selfie um, style, just following yourself around? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even used to do the selfie stick. I'd actually just film out in front of me and I wouldn't even talk. I, I would just film through the house like I was doing a walkthrough. Um, and then I would come home and do a voiceover afterwards, um, putting in everything I want to talk about. This way, you don't have to worry about my heavy breathing when I'm going up the stairs and I'm, I'm getting out of breath and you don't have to hear me stumbling over my words if I forget what I want to say. Um, or I get distracted in the house or whatnot. And then when I'm in my car, I just have a little suction cup mount that's meant, you know, to use your GPS. And I just face it out, record through the dashboard and drive around the communities. And uh, same deal, I'll do a voiceover after. Um, I just recently started, uh, I think it was not this past week's video, the one before, uh, where I actually went out there with the selfie stick and was actually talking with the camera on me while I was going through the house. Uh, that's the first time I did that. Um, I kind of liked it. It takes a little bit more time to be filming out there than to just do a quick three minute walkthrough. Um, but, you know, it's doing well. The retention on that video is, is really high compared to some of my other videos. So, um, you know, the engagement's working. So that's probably what I'll continue doing moving forward. I know you got to have a little guest appearance in uh, one of my recent videos. We're still in the yeah. process of editing that. We'll get that out soon. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I've got my professional videographer there. You know, he's he's an editor as well. He handles it all <laughs> himself. Uh, I've spent a lot of money producing video, but you don't really have to anymore, right? It's. Uh, right. I feel like it went from the holding the camera to I need a full-time videographer to, ah, guess what? Holding the camera does just as well. And the engagement's there. Like you said, you know, people are, are watching those videos a bit more. Um, before we go any further, I know everyone's probably dying to know, 
okay, you know, this guy spends a lot of time uh, making video. Uh, what's his production like? So right. how long have you been in real estate? Uh, what's your production looking like? And let's dive into some of those numbers. Yes. So this is going to be my sixth year in real estate, sixth calendar year. Um, actually, uh, come the end of this month, I'll be at exactly five years in the business since getting my license. Um, and last year is really when the YouTube started taking off. So January, it's been about two years since I was making videos. It took some time to build up and get the leads coming in and turn those leads into clients. Um, but last year I did 26 deals, 21 or 22, which came from YouTube. Um, so it's a little bit under $8 million in volume. Um, this year I already have six deals pending. Those are all from YouTube. Um, a few which have closed already. Some are still pending. Um, a bunch just went under contract this past week. So my entire business right now comes from YouTube. And I mean, prior to that, um, I was, I was struggling. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was cold calling, I was door knocking, I was doing open ho houses and nothing was really sticking for me. And once I switched to videos, really when things started to take off for me. Um, and just to give you some sort of context, my first four years in the business, I did 28 deals total for all four years. Uh, okay. Last year is when, you know, things really started to progress with the YouTube and I did 26 just last year. So, so listen, they say the average agent across the nation does seven deals. So that's what you were averaging your first couple of years in the business. Yep. Right. So, I mean, that's that's to be hitting average is actually not the norm. Right. right. So, uh, but the average agent is doing seven deals and then you, you quadrupled that when you mm -hmm. decided to focus solely on YouTube. So we're not cold calling, door knocking, hitting our sphere, doing any of that stuff now. Uh, do you have a CRM where you're you're using that to uh, kind of convert the leads or nurture the leads that come in on YouTube? Or um, I have a CRM, but I, I don't use it, and it, it's it's really really bad. It's poor because I mean, if if I was good with my CRM and I was keeping up with the people that weren't immediate and now business. I mean, I probably would have done 35, 40 deals last year. Um, I see a lot of missed opportunities. And um, I just, I haven't been super happy with the tools that I have. Um, and right now I'm kind of holding out because I work for Remax and they're rolling out KV Core to every single one of their agents in the US. Gotcha. Um, so we're supposed to be getting that here in the next couple months. So I'm kind of holding out for that system to just kind of update everything on my end and really get the systems in place to turn the, you know, 28 deals into 40, 50, 60 deals with kind of the same amount of effort. Yeah. If there's any advice I could give on that, because I've switched CRMs a few times. Um, I was with uh, a company previously with EXP. They had KV Core for all their agents. And um, I kind of did the same thing at first. Well, let me wait until I have the right tool in place. Right. Since I've made the move over to Real and we have Chime, I continued, even knowing that I was making a move, I continued to put them into KV Core, continued on the campaigns, continued tweaking things a little bit. This way, when I did make the switch, it was export my leads, send them right. into uh, the new CRM. And a lot of times if you tag them right and put them in the right pipelines, it's very easy to just get them into the new CRM and get rolling right away. Yeah, Because there's a lot of time spent on putting them in and setting up your CRM from day one. So my best advice would be get them into a spreadsheet, get them tagged, uh, just have that all set up, figure out with KV Core, they're going to show you um, when you download a CSV file, what the right. columns should look like, right? What each of the headers should look like. Set that up now so that when you're ready to roll, you just you click enter and you're done and you're not spending yeah. two on it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's on the to-do list to do. It's just that stuff just Pours the heck out of me. So it's, it's, you say you're full blown spring season now down there. So you're probably busy as can be. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's tough, but I, I do need to work on it. I know I do. I already have some exported to the CVS or CSV, whatever it is, and and ready to go. And then there's others that are in there that need updates before I export them. So it's a work in progress for sure. Yeah, and and listen. If you can get an assistant to do that, you can get a virtual admin to do that. Somebody right. can do it for you, and you just continue to make content, show houses, and sell houses. That's the highest and best use of your time, right? Not sitting in yeah. front of a computer figuring out a CRM. 
Right. Uh, my, 100%. my team now. I say, guys, I'll handle the CRM stuff. I'll let my admin handle the CRM stuff. You guys get out there, show houses and sell houses. That's what we need to be doing. Right, right. So getting back to the videos a little bit, I, I mean, obviously big YouTube presence. Um, are you anywhere else with your videos? Are, are you cutting them into shorts and throwing them on TikTok and you know, kind of spreading it everywhere? Or are you just focused on YouTube? Um, it's really just YouTube. Um, I'll occasionally throw some stuff up there on Instagram uh, reels and Facebook reels. Um, TikTok, I have the app on my phone. I, I barely even open that. Um, I probably should because I know it, it's it's pretty good at helping you to like grow an audience on there. I just don't know how well it converts. Um but right now I'm really just focusing on YouTube and I've been starting to cut some stuff up into shorts for YouTube. So I figure I'll throw it up on Facebook and Instagram reels as well. Um, and they actually do pretty well on Facebook. Um, so yeah, those are the three spots right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know what? I'm going to share my screen quick and kind of bring up your uh, page if you don't mind. Just yeah, totally. See, uh, see if I can get this to work properly. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I love, you've got your banner there, right? It already says living in Myrtle Beach. I mean, the little let's schedule a call and, and the arrow to click to schedule that call. Let's talk yeah. about that real quick. How's that work? Uh, is that going right into your Calendly or? Uh, is that what that yeah, works? so I don't actually use Calendly. Um, I have an iPhone, I have a MacBook. So I found this app called Fantastical. Um, and, and basically it, it just kind of plugs right into the Apple products and, um, I have all of my scheduling. It's built into the app, um, which is why I decided to use that. Um, I think I pay like 50 bucks for the year for that. And, um, I can create links just like Calendly. Um, but basically that schedule a call right there, they go to my CR or they go to my contact me page on my website. They'll fill in their info and instead of like a thank you page popping up that says hey thank you you know we'll reach out to you shortly uh via call or text whatever you want that to say mine pops up a link for them that says hey thanks for signing up click this link to schedule a call and uh it's the link directly through my calendar so when they sign in in my contact me page they go directly into my crm i just unfortunately never open it and update anything in there and then um they'll get the link to schedule a call and they'll be able to go through my calendar and see what's available, what's not, and uh, pick a time that works for them. So you kind of reverse the squeeze page, right? You got the landing page there, you got their information. And then you say, rather than, Hey, we'll call you. You're like, Hey, schedule the time that you actually want to talk. Um, how's that working? I mean, this, to me, that sounds like a dream, right? People click on the link, say they want to talk to me on Tuesday and, and I'm set, I'm ready to go. Like, is that really working for you? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, that's the cool part about YouTube is, is people watch you for hours. They watch all your videos and they kind of learn a little bit about you and, and what you're like, what your personality is like before they ever meet you. So they want to talk to me and they want to work with me. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit different than another online lead where they're going to put their info in because they want to go see a home in two hours. And if you don't call them within 30 seconds, they're already on to the next agent. Um, Never mind like your Facebook leads that I, you know, I can turn on <laughs> Facebook lead form ads and get 5,000 leads, you know, for a couple bucks if I wanted. But right. curious are they? Most of them are just sitting on the toilet bowl, killing some time saying, oh, I might as well check out this house or you know, whatever this ad may be. So exactly. So getting that more, that, that client or that prospect with more intent, right? They're, they're probably further down the funnel. They, they are. And again, they want to talk with me. So they're okay with waiting. Um, and I kind of put this to the test this past week. I was away for an entire week because I was at R4, the Remax convention, and I blocked off my entire calendar. And I got three leads while I was away this week from videos I made in the past. And two of them scheduled on my calendar for today, this afternoon. Actually, when we get off this call, I have a call uh, right after with one of those clients. And then I have one later this evening at like 4.30. And both of them, they came in, I think on Tuesday and Wednesday. And Monday was my next available opening for a call. And they both scheduled for today. There was a third one that didn't schedule a call. Um, so that's one that I'll go back and call 
you know, I'll reach out to them. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, they didn't schedule a call. Maybe it was too far out or they're not that serious to begin with. But yeah, the serious ones are going to they're going to schedule a call and they're willing to wait as well. So three leads in the week that you were away from videos that weren't even from that week, right? They weren't right. making content that week. Um, I'm seeing here, you know, uh, almost 2,000 subscribers. And what's cool about this, actually, I don't know if you know, but when I jumped on your page, I'm probably going back about three weeks now when I first came across your page, it was at like 1.5 there. So you've gained two to 300 subscribers just in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Just seeing that kind of growth on your page now, that's incredible. Uh, I see your views. You know, we've got like the 1.6 over here, 1.5, 2,000 views, 3,000 views. Do you have any rhyme or reason as to uh, what's getting the most views and the, and the most hits, or is it kind of just potluck? Um, yeah, I, I kind of keep track of that. So a lot of the ones that get the big clicks, um, they're going to be the the videos that are homes that are close to the beach you know people are coming to myrtle beach they want to be close to the beach so if i can put something in the thumbnail um like i think my second to latest video yeah you see it right there it says walk to the beach um so that one's been up for two weeks and it's got almost 800 views um because your finger's almost pointing at my condo there yeah <laughs> you were right around the corner from my place there when you yeah up there in cherry grove yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so anything where you have the beach in it, um, anything with like a super attractive price point, typically the 300 mark or so, three to 400 maybe. Um, I notice anything I post like over 500,000, the views are going to be a little bit lower. Um, and then anything that can be like super general about Myrtle Beach, like five best tips, seven things you need to know, things like that. Um, those those typically blow up pretty fast. Where are you finding uh, most of your leads coming from? Are they are they local to the area already, or are they coming from out of state, relocating? Or yeah, ninety percent of them are going to come from the Northeast, so New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. Yeah. Um, there's a lot from Ohio, um, and more recently, I've been getting a bunch of calls from like Colorado and California as well. Really nice. Yeah. I, I was going to say, so like, you know, that 300 price point is really, really attractive. Somebody coming from my area, at least. Right. You can't, you can't buy a shed in somebody's backyard for 300,000. <laughs> exactly. I have, I have some friends that are home shopping up there right now and, and they send me some of the stuff they're looking at and it's, it's kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and to go live by the beach. I mean, I bought my place. I stole my place. It was literally during the pandemic, during the lockdown, you know, not allowed out of our basements here in New York at the time. And right. uh, I got, you know, oceanfront for 160,000. You can't beat that. Two bedroom. No. Yeah, so, definitely. Definitely can't. But I'm still seeing stuff down there in the low twos, you know, on the ocean right, for a two bedroom. And honestly, like, it takes you. you I, I can't even find an area where I'm going to find something in the 200s on Long Island. Never mind close to the beach. Never mind close to like stuff to do or a good place to be. You know. Yeah, I mean, if if you're open to condos, I mean, it's it's pretty affordable to get right there on the ocean. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, I just want to uh, maybe a little advice for others that are thinking about starting a page, uh, have a page now or channel now, um, and kind of changing things up the way I am. What if somebody else another realtor already has a good presence in your area already had you know, their competition and they already seem to have it locked down do you think an agent should still continue to try to, to take over that market 100 percent, without a doubt um and the way i look at it is i mean if there's five or even 10 or 15 agents in your market who are doing video um, you can't afford to not do it, right? 5, 10, 15, even 50 agents is not competition. Think about how many agents are in your market and think about all the other prospecting things that you're doing, you know, the phone calls, the door knocking, the open houses. I guarantee you there's way more agents in your market that are doing that than are making videos. So even if you do see, you know, 15 people on YouTube, doing what you want to do. That's, that's not competition. And like I mentioned earlier, the best part is they get to see your personality. They get to see what you're like. 
So it's not really a hard sell for you. Um, you know, people are going to, they're going to watch all the people in your area on YouTube and they're going to pick the one that, you know, they feel the most comfortable with based on the videos. And decide who they like. You know, we say all the time, people exactly. do they know, like, and trust. This right. is for them to get to know you, see if they can trust that you're going to get it done. But the most important one of that, right, is like, they got to like you. So it gives them an opportunity to look at you, get to know you without even meeting you yet and see if they like you. Yeah. So when I started, there was already two agents in the area with a couple thousand subscribers, one of which is in my office, who's still making videos in my office. And, you know, I still started anyways, and we're both getting tons of business. Now there's like probably 10 agents in our market who are doing it. And as far as I can tell, we're all getting business from it, from it. since those other agents have joined my funnel hasn't really slowed down so yeah it's it's definitely worth it there's plenty of business out there for everybody right yeah I mean, not for everybody for the top agents are the ones that are working the ones that are trying they're <laughs> exactly the that's it. yeah, yeah. Uh, anything that surprised you about doing this uh whether it be good or bad you know how quickly your business exploded or something that maybe hit you as a surprise or a shock that you can think of you know when you started doing this um, yeah, pretty much how fast things started to take off, right? Like I said, I was already an agent for four years before I decided to start doing YouTube, um, or three and a half years, whatever. And I mean, things weren't going well. And, you know, I had seen what other people were doing with YouTube and, you know, I wanted to give it a shot, but I didn't expect things to blow up. You know, it was just like every other prospecting method that I was doing, um, you know, I figured I'd get some leads, but, you know, to be able to get two to three leads a week, sometimes more than that, I mean, that just m absolutely blew my expectations out of the water. Gotcha. Uh, anything, any advice that you give, like something, oh, I wish I didn't do that or mistakes that you had made that you kind of corrected going down the line? Yeah, my biggest mistake would probably be not being consistent. Um, I don't think as far as like the videos go, I, I don't think you can mess up as long as you're getting out there and you're continually progressing. Um, they're, they're going to be bad in the beginning. I remember my first few videos, I would sit there and it would take me three hours to film a 10 minute video. Cause I would just freeze up looking at the camera. Uh, but you start to get better at it. You start to get used to it. Uh, but the biggest thing would be consistent from the beginning. If you can post a video every single week, that's going to help you grow the fastest. It's going to get the most eyes on you the fastest, which is in the long run to bring you the most leads. Yeah, it's funny you say that because actually that hits home on two levels. I've been licensed going on 15 years. Mm -hmm. and uh, I'd say at least 12 to 13 years ago, nobody was doing video. I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if you remember... Uh, what was the name of the phone? There was there, there was a cool little. It wasn't even a phone, but it was like a flip camera, right? That everybody was pushing. And I had a uh, a vloggy. It was the one that Sony came out with. Yeah. Nobody was doing video. I wanted to do video so bad. I wanted to dominate that market. One, my videos were horrible. I mean, my first video was me sitting in a rocking chair. I put like a a clock. And like a little statue of a, of a lighthouse next to me, sitting in the corner of a room, really bad lighting, rocking back and forth with a sweater and like uh, my collar coming out, popped out under the right. screen, talking about and why your home expired and what I could do to market it better. Uh, so yeah, the videos are horrible in the beginning. You you progress on it. You eventually get better at it. You learn what yep. to do, what not to do, but it's a constant learning, right? There's, there's always changes. There's always learning what I can do better. Uh, but number two, I just, my consistency was not there. Uh, I don't know. My regret is not being consistent with it in the beginning because today I'd be dominating. Mm -hmm. And I started this 12 years ago on a consistent basis. It was a video here, a video there, kind of like what's going on with my podcast right now because my hands are in so many different avenues. Right. I said, it's time for me to get more consistent and get more focused on the type of content that I want to be producing. Yep, one hundred percent. And I mean, you mentioned you know the last time you looked at my channel versus when you looked at it today, how much it's grown, and that's just because of the consistency. I, I decided this year I was posting at least one video every single week, and I wasn't going to miss it. And that's 
so far, you know, we're what nine weeks into the year. This is the most consistent that I've been without missing a video or missing two videos or three in that amount of time. And you can just see it in the analytics, you know, prior to that, I was getting maybe 50 subscribers a month. And now I'm getting close to 150 in the last two months each. And uh, it's just ramping up. And yeah, you can all, really see the difference. Is that all organic or are you running uh, paid leads as well? You know, paid ads on YouTube to try to get your viewership and subscribe? Yeah, I've not, I've not paid one single penny for YouTube ads ever. It's all right. just being consistent about it and putting out good content. Yep. Um, so then last two things, let's just, let's dive into the thumbnails real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe I'll share your, share your screen, screen again here, share that page. Um, doing great on the thumbnails. I, I hear all the time, keep it under five words. Um, obviously don't make them all look the same, have those different faces. I mean, everything in there, what are you using? Are you using Canva or are you using something else to edit your thumbnails or? Yeah, so I use um, I use Canva to get some of my images, like you see there, the South Carolina map, the little truck, the little plane, um, and then I use a it's like a Photoshop knockoff, and it's again available uh, on MacBooks. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's it's kind of like Photoshop. Um, so I'm using those two kind of combined to to make my thumbnails. One thing I'm not seeing that I that I see on everybody else saying is fire. You've got no fire. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's nope. exploding. There's no doom and gloom. The world is ending. The market is crashing. This is uh, hey, people love to be at the beach, and people are actually moving here. And here. I, I actually should put some fire in my thumbnails because the market's so hot in Myrtle Beach. There you go. There you go. We can, we got to add some fire. I want to see one of your next thumbnails in the next three videos. We need some fire there. Um, All right, I'll, I'll figure out how to fit it in. <laughs> and just lastly, where are you getting your ideas for these videos? So it's, I hear agents all the time just saying, you know, I just don't know what to make a video about. And if you're producing at least one every week, uh, that's really good. That's really hitting. Where are mm -hmm. you getting the ideas for this? Um, so I, I just do videos on what my clients are asking me all the time so if i get a phone call and somebody's like hey what's the market common area like well i'm gonna make a video on market common um you know questions people ask me like where are the hospitals how far are the hospitals where's the airport how far is the airport like all that stuff's super easy to make a video on you're answering those questions all the time um so you know, you change your answer a little bit and make it less specific to that one specific person and just give some more general information. Um, you know, those videos are always going to do the best because people have those questions. And then, you know, the simple things to do are the home tours and the community tours, where I think a lot of people mess up with the home tours is they make it about that specific home. You know, they'll get a listing and they'll go do a home tour. Um, if that home sells or if that specific home isn't the right fit for somebody, they're not going to watch that video. But I make my home tours a, a lot more general. So I'll go tour a home and uh, it's what you can get for this price point in this specific area of town or in this specific community. Now that video lives on forever. Like, yeah, the price point might change a little bit. Like my first video I ever posted was what you can get for $200,000 in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, those condos are now $300,000 just because the market's gone up so much in the last two years. But that video still gets dozens and dozens of views every single week. And people are still calling me on that. Like, yeah, now it's a conversation that I have to have that the price has gone up a little bit, but I'd still rather be having that conversation than people not reaching out. Yeah. Um, and, and then same thing with the community tours, you know, those are always going to live on forever. You talk about the average price points, the average sales when you're making that video. Um, but people are still going to watch it because they want to see what the community looks like, how far apart the homes are, what amenities it has, all that stuff. And don't take this as a knock by any means, but when I'm watching your videos, I mm -hmm. want other agents to know too, like 
Nick isn't the most like outgoing flair. Oh. Like, oh, look at me, I'm entertaining everybody. You know, some people watch my stuff that I've done in like uh, real estate agents and golf carts, drinking Bloody Marys or local unlocked, going around town. Like, I'm that guy. I want to be the entertainer, right? Nick is just more like, hey, this is what you can get. Like, what you're seeing here from him is what you're getting in his videos all the time, and yep. people love it. Right? They love the information. They, you're the knowledge broker. Right, you become exactly. a source of information for them that they're like, yeah, no, this is the guy that I want to go out and hang out with and go look at houses mm -hmm. with. And one hundred percent. I I think you have to turn it up a little bit more than what your personality actually is, just because it comes across a little bit more mellow on video. So I turn it up a little bit, but I don't want it to be over exaggerated because again, those people are reaching out to me because they like me and my personality, yep. and they feel I'm going to work well with them. And I want to be the same person when they meet me in person and, you know, it works out. People tell me all the time I'm exactly who they thought I was after watching my videos. And that's like the best compliment I can get. That and uh, I like this one. I've gotten a few times. I want more of it. What we're all aiming for is the, hey, I've watched all your videos. I need you to come over and list my house. Right? Yeah. Like I've gotten two or three of those actually now in the past yeah. year. And like when that when that call comes in, when that message hits, like, no, I don't need a presentation. I know you know your stuff. I've watched all your info. I've watched all your videos, got all the info. I want to work with you. That's why we're doing this at the end of the day, right? 100%. And even like I'd say like my content is a geared a lot more towards buyers. Um, but the cool part is like when I get a listing opportunity, whether it's like a referral or whatnot or you know, something that came in from the cold calling that I used to do in the past. And, you know, they're reaching back out because they've been getting my weekly email or whatever. Um, now this is a marketing tool as well for listings. So I get to go in there and say, look at all the, the organic clicks and all the organic traffic that I'm getting. Look at all of the people signing up on my website every single day from all these organic videos. I know how to get the clicks. I know how to market your home. I get to show them the videos that have thousands of views and you know that just helps on listing appointments as well even if those listings aren't coming from youtube wherever else they're coming from you know you still get to use that in your presentation yeah all day yeah cool, brother thanks for spending the time with me before we go you know, where can people reach you i see you got the hashtag moving with nick where can they find you how can they reach you Yep. Hashtag moving with Nick. Um, on, I'm on Instagram, Nick.Pelosi. That's P-A-O-L-O-Z-Z-I. Uh, Facebook, Nick Pelosi. Um, obviously, you've seen my YouTube channel. Um, if you're an agent, I don't necessarily want you going to subscribe to that just because, you know, that messes with the algorithm. Feel free to go up, check it out and take a look. Um, but yeah, those are the best spots to reach me and, and reach out. Facebook, Instagram and yeah, just send me a message. I think that's that's what you did. You found me on Facebook and sent me a message. Yeah, yeah. I, I initially found you on YouTube and then searched for you on Facebook because I'm right. old. <laughs> I'm one of the dinosaurs now, and uh, Facebook is where I live. So I get I get DMs all the time on my Instagram. I'm like, where was that message again? Oh yeah, Instagram. I got to go there too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, thanks a lot. Thanks for hanging with us. Go enjoy the sunshine. I can't wait to get back down there. I'm open in the next couple of weeks. We'll look at a few more places together. Uh, you know, I will pull the trigger on something else down there. Everybody, you know, you've been following me. You know, I own uh, an Airbnb, a short-term rental down in uh, North Myrtle Beach. Uh, still looking for properties down there. So uh, I'm loving it. I'm lo especially if you're coming from the Northeast, it's the spot to be. Whether it's North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, seems to be where everybody wants to head when they're leaving Long Island. I've got agents that I can connect you with. Definitely agents like Nick. I'll connect you with Nick if you're looking in his area. Uh, agents that work for my team that I've expanded into those areas that are really knowledgeable, uh, really can just hold your hand and help you through that process while we're taking care of selling your house here. And when we can get everybody playing in the sandbox nicely, it just goes so much smoother, gets rid of those headaches, and makes your transition out of New York and down south so much better, so much smoother. Thanks again, Nick. Have a great day. Yep. Thanks for having me. Cool.